Hey girls, I'm so excited to tell you about an experience I had recently. I was one of the 12 girls who was chosen to participate in a really fun and cool workshop that focused on the six biggest challenges we girls face in successfully completing our primary school education. The six biggest challenges are attitudes toward girls' education, to productive health, early marriage, domestic chores, HIV AIDS, and menstruation. We 12 girls were divided into six pairs, and each pair took one of the six challenges to be our team. We consulted and shared our ideas about our team, and then created a story about it. The most fun and exciting part was when we learned how to transform our story into a one-minute film. In our workshop, we learned everything we needed to know to become filmmakers. And now, I'm proud to say that all 12 of us girls created, directed, and produced our own films. Now you are about to join us as you watch our behind-the-scenes experiences and our films. Hope you'll be inspired watching our films as we were creating them. Early Marriage I came from Damut Pulasa. I'm 14 years old and I'm a grade 8 student. I came from Damut Wadi Warada. I'm a grade 7 student and I'm 14 years old. We did a lot of things during the workshop. We directed films, wrote the stories, made storyboards and acted in the films. The thing that made me most happy was the directing part. We chose early marriage as our team because we know that sometimes here in Walaita, early marriage does happen. A girl may suffer during childbirth or labor. She might be injured or even die because her body is not ready to marry and have children. We want people to see this and not give their girls to early marriage. We want them to wait until their daughters are ready. We want others to learn. We are given this special chance that Nen has had before us, and we're using this chance to make films that will help overcome the identified challenges to girls' education. We need children who are going to see these films to learn and make themselves stronger and ready for a better future. All girls should get higher education. In our film, the girl was being given for marriage without her consent. That's why she runs towards the cliff and tries to jump over. But the cliff was a dead end and she had no choice but to come back. She throws herself down on the ground because she has lost all her hope and everyone falls down on top of her, trapping her. Early marriage is against the law, and it should be stopped. Early marriage is against the law. It must stop. The Prime Minister's wife, Roman Tasfai, was here yesterday, and she told us a lot of things. She said that she refused to marry before she graduated from university. She said she only had two skirts and she wore those till she graduated. She advised us to dream big and not focus on the problems we face today. I was very glad to hear the things she told us. Well, now you have seen a close-up look at our workshop and the steps of our process in becoming filmmakers. 
You've also heard us talk about our team and share our opinions. Now that you've watched our one minute film, we hope it caused you to start thinking deeply about the team. Now it's time for you to meet an incredible, successful, accomplished Ethiopian woman who has achieved so much in her life because of her education. She is a role model to all of us because she proves to us that if we have goals and if we stay in school and finish our education, we will achieve our goals and have great careers just like her. Our role model for the team early marriage was Maza Shannafi. We learned a lot about her strength and courage from her life experience. I learned that if girls are educated, they can achieve big things. It is always possible to become a doctor or a professor. My name is Maaza Shanafi Mengistu. I was born and raised in Benishangulgum's region, Asusa City. When I was 17, I finished high school. Because of high scores on my high school living exam, I attended Addis Ababa University and studied law. I was one of the founders of Ethiopian Women Lawyers Association and its executive director for eight years. Currently, I work at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa as women's rights advisor in the Division of Gender and Social Policy Development. One of the things I did in the past couple of years was to establish a nut bank. Eleven of my women friends and I set out to accomplish this. And it was a great challenge because we had to come up with 75 million bur. It took us two years to just raise 10 million bur because establishing a bank was not something we could do only with our contribution. It required investors with some money. We believe that we must have a bank that is established by women and that will support women. Though it was a great idea, making it a reality was very challenging. Although it took nearly four years to become a reality, we have fulfilled our dream because we didn't give up. This is one of my greatest challenges and achievements in my career. Adolescence is a hard time, not just for young girls, but for boys as well. Maybe we don't remember how we passed through this time of our lives or how it was for us. But adolescence is a transitional time. It's a time when children become adults. During this time, there is the expectation of society of how the child should be. There is the physical change the child goes through and the psychological change that comes with it. Children are given little or no support to understand and cope with the physical, psychological and emotional change they go through during puberty. Even children living in the best social conditions need support. So those children who face serious social problems, such as not having the opportunity for education, those who lack assistance of any sort, and particularly the many children who are susceptible to early marriage are the ones who face the most challenging adolescence because of these overlapping burdens. <laughs> In order to get through all this, you'd must take responsibility. Anyone betrothed for an early marriage should try to convince the family and society that what they really need and the best way for them is education. They must not accept the situation, but rather try to change it. This must be their sole objective. Even where there is little opportunity, we should use whatever we have to make changes. The only thing we need is audacity. Education is a very liberating tool for all people, especially for women. And when I say this, it should not come as a shock. Any marriage concluded under the age of 18 years is against the law and is a crime punishable under the criminal law of Ethiopia. Accomplices are liable for punishment as well. This is one thing. And the second thing is the attitude of parents. What will be helpful is if parents are not short-sighted. By giving their daughters for marriage, they might get some reward in short terms, such as money, cattle, or small personal gain for themselves. However, they need to be aware that they are effectively stopping the long journey ahead of their daughters 
and causing significant damage to their daughters' lives and futures. Parents of girls should also start to resist traditions that influence and encourage child marriage. They should not feel they have to marry off their young girls to get social recognition. To stop child marriage, each of us, parents as well as the community, are responsible. To prevent and stop child marriage and violence against women, teachers, police officers, judges and women's affairs offices have special responsibility. Girls should make every effort to go to these individuals or institutions to seek advice and remedy. By the way, girls have better information than their parents, hence, they can increase awareness by enlightening their parents about the devastating effects of early marriage on young girls. I feel lucky to have gotten this far in my life and my career. I started from an area which is 800 kilometers outside of Addis Ababa, came to Addis Ababa and joined Addis Ababa University to study law. I worked as a judge, a lawyer, and as an activist and a UN staff member. I have received international awards for my contribution to our society, and I'm proud of that. I have achieved this by building my skills and by maintaining a good behavior. So if I was able to do that, you can do it too. If you believe that you can better your life by getting married, you are wrong. The only way you can have a better life is to get education and be economically and socially independent. If you are educated, you will have a profession that will bring you income, confidence and the independence that you deserve. You can be in any profession. You can be a business person, teacher, doctor, lawyer, pilot, but your primary focus should be your education and your profession. Thereafter, you are free to build your own family and enjoy both worlds. It's against the law for girls to marry before they reach age 18. We must ask for help at school or in the community if our family tries to force us to marry early. When we marry too young, we risk injury or death during pregnancy and childbirth. Early marriage generally forces us to leave school and we become trapped in poverty. We can talk to female teachers, our school director or gender officer if our family tries to force us to marry before we're 18. It's our right to stay in school and complete our education. I hope you feel inspired by listening to our role model and learning all the great success she has had in spite of the challenges she faced in her life. Every one of us can aspire to becoming a role model for other girls. As long as we stay committed to staying in school, keeping ourselves healthy and working towards our goals. <laughs>